So I'll go ahead and make a worksheet for geometric tolerances. Make sure you've got your title block and template with layers set up to start with. From the top, top view, I'm going to start with a circle centered at zero, zero. And the first one, I'm setting the radius to one. Enter pulls up that previous command, another center of zero, and this time a radius of two. And enter, another circle, zero, zero, this time a radius of six. Circle, and put this next one to the left, so the center is negative four, zero, and a radius of one. I'm then going to use an array to make five copies of this guy. So selecting the circle, enter, and I'm going to choose a polar array with a base point of 0, 0, enter. That brings up this new menu on top, so I'm going to select five items in my array. And that's the top view I need for this worksheet. Okay, for the next bit, you can subtract and make this in a bunch of different pieces, or this is why I like press pull. For press pull, I'm not gonna select on the line. I'm actually inside of the object that I want to pull up. So for this one, I'm going to pull this outside up a distance of four. So that height is four. And then I'm going to reach inside of this. Let me just show you what that did. So I'm going to then reach inside and again use press pull. Not clicking on the line, but in between on the surface. So make sure to click on the surface and that will get you a solid and this piece goes up a distance of eight. Escape gets you out of press pull. Escape, escape. Right now the, the center is a different piece than the edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and use union and pull these guys into one object. And that gives me what was on the geometric tolerance worksheet. Okay, this is going to fit better on a portrait. So I'm going to pull up my layout over here that has a portrait. And let's try up the view base command. Enter. I'm pulling the object from model space. And I'll go ahead and leave it as the default size to give ourselves lots of room. So click Enter and then click. Right now I have a lot of hidden lines in my front view and what we would like to do is create a sectional view. Now this is a little bit of a, um, our sectional view should actually cut through kind of the interesting radial features of this object and we're going to have to kind of fight with AutoCAD a little bit to get all of these hatching patterns in there. So this is why we started that array pattern to the left-hand side is because this will not pull off straight down if it was from the other side. So I have my snaps on so that I can snap to the center. I'm pulling it off out to the out to the edge of this. So not right on the circle, but to the edge. And I'm going to bring it right here to the center. And then if I hover over the center of this circle, we'll see if it kind of helps me to pull this out from the center to continue that line out. So I'll say enter. And this is what we would like to come straight down. So enter. 
And I'm going to go ahead and delete out that very first view. Turn off my snaps. And I'm going to use quick properties to change the font size of that section label. Move this over here. Just kind of reset a few different things. That section label will have to kind of hide a little bit here. Give ourselves some room. Now you'll notice, unfortunately, AutoCAD is only doing the hatching pattern over here. And if you find a better way to do this, let me know. But I've messed with it for a while. And I found that the only way to add hatching is to actually use a polyline and walk around this view section with a polyline. And then that will give me something to add those hatches to. For the polyline, the very last one, say C for close. And then I can pull up my hatch command. And we're going to pick the internal layer. Now it is pulling up the same hatching pattern as it already had going in there. So that is that is what I'm going to do to get the hatching in here correctly. So yeah, if someone is able, it's, it's just an artifact of not having that sectional view straight through the center of it. So I'll make some polylines here. I guess that could have been just a good old rectangle and hatch the inside and hatch the inside, enter. Okay, so now we have something that looks kind of like this worksheet and we can start on adding our geometric tolerance notes. So let's go ahead and look at this one first. So we're going to say two position with A and B. So what is it talking about? So here is A. This is going to be, I'll show you how to do a datum triangle. And we're going to have to do some extension lines here for both A and B datum triangle. And true position, we need to look up the, um, the symbol for that. So if you come over here, position has this circle with kind of that bullseye in it. So that's what we're after there for our geometric tolerance notes. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Don't forget to save quite often. And we're going to use Q leader command is what gives us geometric. So geometry centered. 90 degrees parallel the geometry of it rather than dimension plus or minus 0.01 inches or something. Okay, so Q leader, and we're going to go into settings. So you can click enter or click settings, and it should bring up annotation and leader tabs. So we don't want a multi line text, we want tolerance over here. And let's go ahead and start with our closed arrow. We'll do the um, symbol and the 0.15 first, and then we will label A and B surfaces. But for now, we'll, we'll leave it for this, this arrow. So I'll say, okay. And I have my snaps turned on. So that allows me to grab kind of the side of this guy. Make sure you're, you're pulling this line out far enough that you get the, the arrow on there. So I'll bring it out here. And do you remember which symbol we're after? This little bullseye symbol. And it needs to be within 0.15 inches centered with A and B. You don't have to fill out every last block. It will only draw rectangles around the information that you filled in. 
So that's kind of the, the first geometric tolerance note that we're trying to get here, this first little guy. Okay, to get surface A and B on here, so we're going to have to get these extension dimension lines and then use a datum triangle. So I am going to use just dim linear as a way to get some arrows on here. Now, right now, my dimension has too many sig figs and it's not between the extension lines. I'm going to go to dim style and modify this. And I'm going to say keep both text and arrows in between my dimension lines. And I can come over here and I can change my format, my precision, if I would like. So I'll go ahead and say set to current and close. Let's go ahead and try that dim linear one more time. Now that we've done our dimensional settings a little bit differently, you'll notice now my dimension can actually fit in between those arrows. So I'll try and center that on there. If it gives you these little exclamation points, you can click on reassociate and see if you can fix that. Sometimes it's easier to fix it than others. So you can use these little blue nodes and kind of drag it around to where it needs to be. So we need some of those up here and one more dim linear. Usually when you're going to give a dimension to something, you would add the dimension in the view where you can see it. So I cannot actually see that this is a circle from this dimension. So it would be better to put that 0.5 actually on the um, on the top. So I'm going to double click and actually delete the text out of there, which will pull that line in. And then what I really want is these extension lines. Let's go ahead and add A with the datum triangle down at the bottom and B at the top. So we'll get Q leader again. Go into settings and tolerance. And this time we're going to do a datum triangle. And we don't need a bunch of um, line segments here. So just put this down to two. I'm going to say OK. And click right here. Make sure you're pulling this out far enough that you get that triangle to show up and click, and we would like to label the base with A. So there's A. You might not be able to get rid of this um, association on here because we're not actually attaching it to the object itself. So that little exclamation point will not print. You can um, ignore it. So we'll do the same thing up here. We don't need to reset it. We're just going to keep that same triangle from before. So again, pull this out. And this one was datum B. Okay, so now we have Q leader with surfaces labeled. If you want to keep going through the rest of that worksheet, so where it says round within 0.02, come over here and find the, the symbol for roundness, that's a circle. Or you can say cylindrical within 0.05. So if you come over here and find cylindrical, that's this little guy. And see if you can finish up all of the of the geometric tolerances on this.